<laughs> oh! Well, hey there, guys. Uh, I'm Axel the Beast of Zelda Dungeon Dungeon.net, and this is the Curiosity Shop, the Zelda Dungeon.net video mailbag, where I answer your Zelda questions on Zelda Dungeon.net. Uh, Pierce Mida 333 asks, In the last mailbag, you mentioned that you didn't believe the Minish Cap was the beginning of the Zelda timeline. Why not, and where do you think it would fall in the timeline? Um, the Minish Cap, you know, the one thing about Minish Cap is, um, as I've mentioned, I think, in a, one of my earliest uh, video blogs, is that, um, because of, you know, the nature of who made it, there's a little bit of a questionableness to how canonical the game is, you know? I mean, not to say it is non-canonical, I'm just saying, you know, it's not as definite as some other games. Um, there's no evidence, in my opinion, no solid evidence that just says, you know, this is this way, you know, this is how it is, there's no exceptions, um, that says it's at the beginning of the timeline. There's, no, no, there's things people bring up, and I can't ignore that, but they don't say for sure this is the beginning of the timeline. I think um, there's a lot of potential for even to be at the end. I, me personally, I think there's a strong possibility it is at the beginning, but I think there's also a strong possibility it could be at the very freaking end. Or it could just have nothing to do with anything and only appear, you know, it doesn't even have a specific place in the timeline. I don't know. I just don't think it's definitely at the beginning. Um, Ross Pepper asks, I think the addition of sailing and train riding in the DS titles have made the games too linear. Do you think for the next handheld title they will keep with the same travel theme, or that they will go back to the gameplay of Oracle of Ages and Seasons? Um, the DS games sort of have their own side game type. You know how, like, the different Zelda games, they play differently? Like, there's the original Legend of Zelda, and then, like, the 2D games have sort of followed that with, like, Oracle of Ages and Seasons. There's the 3D Zeldas. There's the DS Zeldas, and then there's, like, Adventure of Link. I don't think they should ditch any of the game types, really. Um, uh, you know, I think, uh, also with the next, like, the next DS title, they may try to, like, complete the trilogy they had going. I've mentioned this in, I think, my first Curiosity Shop. They, uh, t you know, like, land, sea, and air. Well, they might throw in an air game. I think it's possible they could continue this. Um... That said, other than that, I think in the future they will try different game types. I don't think we're going to see all this Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Track stuff with the, you know, touchscreen like I was just playing. I, I just, you know, we'll obviously see changes. I don't know if it's going to be the next one, but sometime definitely. I personally like them, but I can understand that it can't be that way forever. Um, Scene McLaughlin asks, what do you think and hope that Nintendo is going to change in the new Ocarina of Time for the 3DS? Besides the iron boots and the graphics, do you think the landscape will change dr drastically? Uh, from, I've actually seen screenshots. The landscape looks roughly the same. I've even seen a familiar location in Hyrule Field. Uh, they could change some places, obviously, but I think largely we'll see the same stuff. Um, the controls, I'm, that's one thing I'm not sure about. Are they going to use like the buttons, or is it going to be touchscreen based? I'm curious about that, and I don't really know. They could change the controls. Obviously, they have to, to some degree to make it work, but maybe that's why they threw in the the little thing that looks like an analog stick. Um, I think the game will be mostly the same. There might be tweaks uh, to the gameplay, obviously, uh, but and like different things, like some items might be here or there, depending on whatever. And um, I'd like it if they threw in a couple extras. You know, not necessarily change the game as it was, but add stuff onto it. New, maybe a new dungeon, or maybe a lot of new side quests. So I don't know, but I can't say for sure what they're going to change. But there will be tweaks at least. I guarantee you. Uh, my paper fell on the floor here. Uh, Doctor Ock, awesome name, asks, "Do you see Majora's Mask being remade somewhere down the line as well?" Um, not really. I mean, that'd be cool, obviously. You know I love Majora's Mask. But, um, you know, I think Ocarina of Time was sort of made as, like, a fan service thing. You know, I mean, not the, the the pervy stuff. You know, just, you know, people something, some, something people want it. I think um, the only reason they made it is because people wanted it, and they were talking about it for a while. I mean, come on, you guys and stuff you wouldn't stop talking about it. And it was rumored for a while. So I think that's why they made it. So unless Majora's Mask is in really a lot of demand for that kind of thing, I won't, don't expect to see it, or any other game. So if you guys want it, you know, shout out, man. Tell them that that's what you want. You send emails to Nintendo, and you just, you don't shut up, all right? 
Uh, three Hearts Only asks, When hearing about Skyward Sword, the land of Skylock made me think of the city in the sky and Twilight Princess. Since you predict Skyward Sword is at the beginning of the timeline, is it possible that Skyloft and the City of the Sky are connected? For example, the City in the Sky is the ruins or part of the ruins of Skyloft? Um, you know, that's possible. Uh, you know, maybe. I mean, obviously we don't know for sure. But, you know, the series have a prevalence of sky-based areas. There's the City in the Sky. Uh, there was this, the Cloud Tops in the Minish Cap. You had the, uh, the Sky, uh, what were they called? The Wind Tribe. They were the Wind Tribe. They weren't the air tribe, they weren't the sky tribe, they were the wind tribe. Um, you know, there's been a prevalence of that, so the fact that they're doing a whole distinct area based on that, and seems like the plot is revolving around that, it sort of does imply that the game will, you know, have that whole sky thing, and might we might see references or an explanation to that kind of thing. Um, the ruins idea is very interesting. I'm not sure, it'd be cool to see. What'll be interesting is if the Master Sword is actually created by the Uka. I don't know about that. I think mean, that's that's. Uh, I don't know what to say there. Just a possibility. Throwing it out there. Food for thought. Uh. The Legend of Jub asks, "How do you think Skyloft will work in Skyward Sword? I.e., a Hyrule field, a hub, etc." It's definitely not going to be a hub. I think maybe I'm I, maybe I'm not basing this on anything, but I think we've seen enough to assume that the game isn't going to have a hub. Um, I think it, there's, a uh, two possibilities. It'll be a normal area, you know, just like, you know, Death Mountain or, you know, Zora's River, you know, Lake Hylia, whatever. It could be just an area like that, albeit maybe bigger. And the second is that it's actually a second overworld, and I, that's the one I think. I think that it'll be an, a second overworld, and they've talked about even being dungeons in Skyloft. So I think that's almost definite, almost confirmed. And I think there'll be, like the two lands, you know, the lower one and the upper one, will be, you know, intricately linked. There might be areas you can't get to from, unless you're coming from the other, you can't get to it well on the same overworld, or whatever. I think they'll play a lot on it, and traveling back and forth, and I think that they will be a very interesting uh, d dual overworld thing, perhaps a little bit like A Link to the Past with its Dark World. Um, yeah. Um... Haku Kurosaki asks, Do you think the new controls of the bow and arrow will be more or less accurate than Twilight Princess? Will it be fast enough in a boss battle? Uh, they've showed sort of what it'll be like. It's like, it controls like Wii Sports Resorts, uh, you know, Wii Motion Plus bow thing. Um, so it's very realistic and, you know, I have to do the motions. Uh, it, it looks to me like it could be potentially very accurate, but very difficult to use. You know, challenging. It's challenging. You really gotta aim and really use it. Um, so the thing is, is it will be slower. That's why I think they might amp up the power of the weapon. It'll do more damage. It'll shoot farther, you know? It'll be funner as well. And I think that's why they threw in the slingshot, which is obviously a quick point-and-shoot projectile weapon at, you know, medium to close range. So I think there's that balance of the long-range power sniper weapon and the short-range, you know, kind of dinky thing, you know? Um... Presley asks, I noticed at the E3 demo there were no NPCs. Do you think Skyward Sword will have NPC interaction like Ocarina of Time where there were a few, or Majora's Mask where NPC interactions was part of the whole quest? A better example of like a few would probably be A Link to the Past, not to correct you, I don't want to be a jerk. Uh, you know, it'll probably be like Ocarina of Time and all realis realism, I mean that's what the whole series is like, unless they're going to change it a lot like they promised several times. Um, you know, maybe it'll be like Majora's Mask because that would have a lot more depth, and it'd be interesting. I don't know. I'd like to see that, personally, but I love Madura's Mask, so I'm biased. Um, yeah. Uh, Billy Tran asks, Even though the graphics in Skyward Sword seem to be of a lighter tone, do you think there will be some dark elements in the game? I definitely think so, and, of course, hope so. I mean, despite my complaining about the darkness of Twilight Princess, for example, you guys know I love creepy stuff. <laughs> So, um, uh, I think that there definitely needs to be variety, and I think the creepy areas really add that variety. You really need to have the scary location to complement the, um, the normal areas you go to. I mean, remember the Shadow Temple? I mean, that place was very different from everything else in Ocarina of Time. So, uh, even was, um, like the Earth Temple in Wind Waker. You know, it's necessary, and it's good. It adds a lot to the game. Um, 
you know, we could see some darker mo- I think the game will be lighter, even though the plot- the art style doesn't necessarily tell us much about that. I think we could see dark moments in the plot. I mean, Zelda always has the dark moments. And perhaps in the themes, like the Shadow Temple and stuff. I mean, we're, we're gonna see some dark stuff. If they don't, I'm gonna be complaining. So, yeah. Um, the last question. Funky Robot asks, When hearing about the story of Skyward Sword, it sounds a lot like the backstory of the, to the Minish Cap. Do you think this Link is the Hero of Men, given this Link does have a hat? Um, the Hero of Men, his sword turns into the Four Sword, or it is the Four Sword, so I don't know, there's a little weirdness there. Uh, you know, there's linking issues, although Zelda's always had that, so maybe that doesn't mean much. Um, I don't really know. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, and I don't think the hat means anything. I don't, I never liked that. Yeah. Alright, that's it for this time, guys. Uh, be sure to send your questions to the email address in the description, and later.